Welcome back to The Agent Goldmine. Here's what to expect to learn in today's show. How to use Facebook to go from zero to 44 closings in less than two years with no paid ads, nothing fancy, in less than one hour of time per day. Today's guest, we have Nassim Issa, or on Instagram, it's Idaho Realtor Naz. And he is based out in Boise, Idaho. And he talks about how he didn't like door knocking. So he switched to Facebook and he's crushing it. He is an icon with eXp Realty and he's been in the business less than two years. He's done 44 closings. That doesn't even include his referrals. And in the last year, he's done 30 closings and almost 12 million in volume. He focuses on military relocation because he was Air Force himself. And he focuses on working with first time home buyers. He is a solo agent. He's not being handed out leads. And it is, as he wrote, he is solo dolo. <laughs> and it's just him and his TC. <laughs> so hit him up. This is going to be a great episode. And he talks a little bit about uh, chat GPT as well. So let us know your feedback. If you know of anyone that should be a guest on this show, hit us up. Allie the agent, the Shelby show. We respond to all messages. Let's bring Nas. <laughs> This is The Agent Goldmine, where you'll find real talk, shit talk, and ambition. We're here to build real businesses and be more than your average agent. We want to know what the killers are actually doing within their businesses, the reality of it. All tactical, no fluff. So we're here to find out. Please share and enjoy. Naz, thank you so much for coming on the show. We're excited. I love how the first word of the show was shit. <laughs> and your, as we're reading over your bio you know, your, your stats, your everything about you. You're going to talk to us today about how to make six figures through networking. How did you do it? Yeah. So I'm a huge Facebook nerd. I love to be on Facebook and just make life easy. Right. I hate door knocking. I did it one time, went and door knocked 750 doors in a week, worst fucking time of my life. I'll never do it again. I will never preach to anybody to go door knock. It's just not me. Right. So how I started to build this network of multiple six figure income is by adding five people a day, right? Now it could be an agent, it could be a lender, maybe not in your area, but that services 50 feet or 50 feet, 50 states, you know, it could be anything. So as far as people and just connecting with them, some people like to shoot the gun and be like, Hey, I'm a real estate agent. I would love to be uh, your referral partner. And then they disappear off the planet. Right. Hey, awesome, man. Like, I will never think of you again because your interaction meant absolutely nothing to me. I also have, you know, people that want to mow lawns for some of my clients. I have people that want to put roofs for some of my clients and they approached me the exact same way you just did, provided me zero value with no intention of actually building a genuine relationship. And it just doesn't work out. So key to success, add five people, whether they're local, whether they have mutual friends, whether they're lenders, agents around your area or surrounding areas, right? Preferably, probably not in the local area because they're probably also your competition, right? So common sense there. But add people from Arizona, add people from freaking Washington. If you're in Texas, add up someone from every single other state um, and just kind of start liking and commenting and interacting and then eventually get to the stage where you start communicating with them. So that's kind of how I started doing it, building it five people at a time. And now we just continue to grow. Dude, and you're in Boise, Idaho. So is that also maybe a reason why you hated door knocking because it's cold as shit there? <laughs> or what are the other reasons? <laughs> so no, I just kind of feel like door knocking and, you know, not to knock anybody's hustle, right? Some people just love it. But for me personally, as a as a strategic, just, just a businessman, right? It's just, okay, I can go hit 750 doors, but it took me all week long to do that where I could just go, you know, hop on TikTok real quick, show them what I'm doing, and I could hit a thousand people within an hour. So it's just, just kind of like, for me, what is most time efficient? What is going to make the most sense for my business and get the most awareness versus me hitting, you know, door by door by door, hoping to God that someone, one, doesn't try to shoot me, and two, is opening the door and kind enough to even have the conversation with me. Really good point there about the shooting, especially since, I mean... Uh, there are racist people everywhere. <laughs> I'll just leave it at that. So <laughs> it's Idaho. <laughs> yeah, yeah, especially in Idaho. Um, and and yeah. this is what something like Alex Ramosi talks about this a lot. The the quadrant of would it be marketing or advertising, but it's essentially one to one, which is door knocking, yep. um, or one to many, which is 
Facebook and putting stuff out there where it's not just going to one other person. It could be going to unlimited. There's no, you know, no cap on how many people it could, it could, you could affect. So when it comes to Facebook specifically, where talk, let's dive deeper into Facebook. Yeah. Yeah. I'll just dive deeper into Facebook. Okay. So, I mean, yeah. So Facebook kind of goes hand in hand with Instagram to me personally. Right. So Instagram, we make one post uh, Monday and we also make one post Friday and that's at a bare minimum. And obviously this also transfers over to Facebook. So my Monday post is my real estate zone of genius, right? So this is where we're talking about, hey, buyers, if you're out there today, we're going to talk about what earnest money is, right? So earnest money is kind of like a deposit. Think of it as a promise ring, right? And we're going to get into all that. I know we're all agents and we all know what earnest money is. Or if you don't have earnest money in your states, it's a promise ring. It's basically saying, hey, we have the full intent of marrying this house, pending, you know, an inspection and appraisal and that it doesn't collapse on the final walkthrough. And and that's kind of what I do. Right. So Mondays, I'm just spitting game as far as real estate knowledge. And then Fridays, I'm going into my life, some life and wisdom. Right. So, hey, guys, just so you know, I come from an Air Force background. So a lot of people may not know that. Or, hey, you know, a little bit about me. I actually was terrified of fucking dogs and I ended up going to get a pit bull for my first dog. Why did I do that? I don't fucking know. But you know what? That was kind of where I ended up. And he was a cute puppy. And now he's just this big beef head just like me. So. It's just talking about me, right? So those are the two posts I make at a minimum every single week. And then I have my stories. So Facebook, Instagram stories are also integrated. So I'm making four stories a day. One is going to be my my workout routine. The second one is going to be, hey, this is what I'm eating today. You know, we actually just finished Ramadan. I'm Muslim. So, you know, we were doing the whole fasting thing. So I wasn't posting food in consideration of people that were also fasting and probably didn't want to see how good my 113 grams of protein turkey burger looked. and Yeah. So then my third post is just something I'm doing today. And then fourth was just kind of like what I was doing as far as the real estate thing. And then anything on top of that is just the cherry on top. But then Facebook, you can get kind of funny with it. Right. So those are the posts that I'm posting every week. And then now Facebook, I also come on there and I talk a little bit of shit. I'm going to talk about the 49ers because I'm a huge football guy and I think they're the best in the world. And then I'm going to go like, comment and message people because that is also part of networking. So like I said, once you establish that network of five people a day and you start having some some people to, you know, kind of interact with, then you actually get to business. Right now we're liking, commenting, be like, for example, someone has a birthday. Hey, happy birthday. Hey, love the birthday picture. And then I'll message them, hey man, happy birthday. I know I saw your post. What did you guys end up doing for your birthday today? We're having a conversation now, right? So now we're hitting that person. Then I'll see another post. Maybe they just posted, oh no, my kid got bit by their brother and now they're in the hospital um you remember that little video charlie bit me right so kind of some some stupid things like that i'll be like hey man saw your kid got bit crazy because my girlfriend bites me too that's so unfortunate how that happens but it's just interacting with people and just being genuine okay i am i want to loop back to the adding five people thing just so i understand so you really mentioned you you literally pick anyone that you add or is this within the real estate industry Yeah. So literally what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to show you guys how I do it live. So are you going to share your screen? I'm going to show you guys my phone, right? I have no idea who this is. I see that we have 23 mutual friends. Hey, MJ, you know what? You look like my guy. We're going to connect. So I just sent him a friend request. He adds me. Awesome. Guess what? Now I'm going to, I'm going to pop up to his feed. He's going to pop up to mine and I'm going to start interacting with his stuff. Right. Hey, cool. Look, there's a guy out here, O'Shea. I hope I said that right. Hey, look, he's got 22 mutual friends and he's out of Idaho, but he's in Twin Falls. It's a little far from me, but I also service that area. Hey, I'm going to add him. And if we connect, awesome. If he doesn't, we're going to keep it moving, right? But I'm at least attempting. Perfect. Anthony Wood, my guys with EXP, just like me. I don't know where he's at. So I may stock a little bit, be like, okay, he's in the Bay Area. I love my Californians. I lived in California. I'm going to add him. Hopefully we can connect and some some referrals back and forth. So there's three people, right? But I'm going to do that for five people every single day. And that's going to continue to build my network. So that's kind of what I mean by the five people. Okay. So and that that helps clarify because it's mutual friends, people that you already have something in common with. It's not like you're right. just completely random. Oh, yeah, you know? no. Okay, gotcha. So you step one essentially is you get on Facebook and you pick, you know, your five mutual friends, you add them, and then you start interacting with them in an organic, natural way. And then when you're posting 
for sure every Monday and Friday with those specific either real estate zone of genius or your life Life wisdom. wisdom. Yeah. Post then. Plus with those stories, those people who you added because you recently added them and engaged with their, their content, then the the algorithm (laughs) is going to push, you know, your recent posts their way. And then you're going to start pulling them into, into your orbit. And they're going to go to your page and see that you're in real estate and be like, Oh dude, I actually am interested in whatever X, Y, and Z. And so, okay. Is that the, is that the strategy? Thank you for listening. Out of respect for your time, we want to make this show as valuable as possible for you. So if you have any feedback on how we can improve, please let us know. DM us at Ali the Agent and The Shelby Show. 100%. That is the easiest breakdown of how to do it. And it's just such a basic level as far as what you could do just to get started, right? So this could apply to someone that's brand new or been in the game 20 years and maybe just doesn't like to do social media like that and doesn't want to go out and connect with people. Okay, wait, I have a follow-on question. Hey. So now that you've, you know, seen their birthday in this example that you gave and you messaged them and you're like, hey, I saw your post, what'd you end up doing for your birthday? Yeah. How I know agents struggle with this. They yeah. struggle in how to turn a conversation into the direction of real estate in a super natural way. What are, yeah. What's your advice? How do you do it? Well, I try not to keep it real estate related right off the get right. It's, it's just kind of salesy. You don't want to be a salesman. And, and mind you, yes, we're in the industry of sales, but more than anything, we're in the industry of relationships. We're in the industry of, I like you, you like me. Now you also know I get into real estate. So to answer your question, eventually what I'll do is, right, I'm always asking the questions because I want to lead the conversations. I want to be in control of where this conversation is headed. And maybe they're like, hey, we're doing a birthday party at this at Chandler's, which is like a super high end restaurant. I'm going to be like, damn, man, you guys took 20 people. What do you do for work? Right. And they may be like, hey, man, I'm." they're probably not going to be a real estate agent. But in the case, they are be like, oh, awesome. Me, too. But maybe they're like, hey, I'm actually a structural engineer for X, Y, Z and da, 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 da. I'd be like, oh, man, that's awesome. You would actually be a great connect because I'm actually a real estate agent and I'm always trying to build my connection based upon different professions. So I would absolutely love to add you to my database. And, and, you know, likewise, if I could help you in any way, that would be awesome. So that's kind of how I would direct that conversation. And since we're on the topic of Facebook, and before we go further away from this, this is the golden nugget for, for today is specifically Facebook groups. So yeah. can you talk to us about how, because everyone knows, you know, like with with some Facebook posts that are out there. I just found out that I'm PCS into Mountain Home and everyone and their dang mother is just yep. like on it. How do yep. you stand out? And so back up, backing up a little bit, Facebook groups, which ones are you a part of? Can we talk deeper about that? And how yeah. do you end up converting? Yeah. So, you know, a, a huge, huge avenue outside of networking comes down to Um, being a part of those groups as well, right? So networking is one avenue, but agent to agent referrals is just such a huge factor for, you know, a lot of seasoned agents kind of like income and how they create business. So for me, it was like, all right, well, what's the easiest way for me to build relationships with agents or capture referrals from other agents, which are most likely already vetted or maybe pre-approved already in the aspect where it's just me getting on the phone, having that conversation, setting those appointments, and now we're converting them. And it was Facebook groups. I got introduced to a group of, you know, fellow veterans and they kind of just were like, hey, make sure you join all these groups. Right. So, for example, the main ones, right, the real estate mastermind group, there's going to be lab code agents, lab code agents, referrals. There's going to be realtor networking and tips. Uh, And there's just so many different groups, which my my golden nugget to the group will be creating this list to share with everybody um, so that they can all join. Yes, I'm, I'm going to do some homework. <laughs> but yeah, so that's kind of that's kind of the groups, right? Now, let's say someone posts that, hey, we're looking for a real estate agent in Mountain Home, Idaho. We're getting ready to PCS there. And they may, they may give you specifics. They may not, right? Sometimes they'll tell you, hey, we want a 25% referral fee. Maybe they want 30%. Some people are getting wild asking for 35, 40, 50%. Cool and all. I don't judge anybody. You know, you got to get it where you can. But yeah, it's kind of a turnoff seeing those those numbers. But personally, What I'm doing is first I'm commenting, right? And as soon as I comment before anything else, I'm going to call. My my next step is calling those agents and saying, hey, I'm the city, I'm in Mountain Home, Idaho. I heard you have a client that is PCSing this way. How can I help? I'm not going to tell them about me. 
My objective is to get them to tell me about the client because now I'm already insinuating that we're working together now. And a lot of people are like, hey, I'm the same. I closed 12 million last year. Top producer. I just hit icon. Like they're just like throwing up on people. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, cool, man. Like, all right, I'll, I'll send your information to my client. And if they want to get thrown up on, they can too. But for me, it's like, hey, let's get more information because they're ve- it's, it's very vague. They may tell you timeline. They may tell you what they're charging. So depending on the post, those are going to be based off the questions I have, right? And those questions are going to be time frame. When are they getting here? Referral fee. How much would you like me to pay you for my services? Three, are they pre-approved or are they selling the property right, depending on the post? And those are the top three questions. Usually after that, they're going to ask you brokerage, referral information, things like that. But you know, I've had a couple conversations with, hey, we'd like to set up a more in-depth interview just to get, you know, a little bit more about you and your business and your systems, which in that in that aspect, right, you're just going to have that follow-up call with them and make sure you're prepared to give them the information they're asking. And don't lie, because I hate when people get on here, oh, yeah, I'm a top agent. Dude, I can look up your numbers. Don't tell me you, you closed 16 houses when I look up and it says six. You know what I'm saying? So just being authentic as well. So that's kind of how I go about the the social groups and just agent to agent referrals. Okay. Okay. Dude, that makes so much sense. Some question though. So you, you know, as soon as you see it, you comment and then you call them ASAP. And I love that you don't, you know, try to sell yourself and you always, you're already acting as if you're helping and that you're a part of the transaction. I feel like that's so important. And I, I talk to our agents all the time in five pillars about, you know, when you're having conversation with someone, it's like, when, okay, these are the next steps that we're, we're going to do together from this point forward. Not, can I be your agent? No, you just act like you have it and make them tell you that you don't, <laughs> if that is the case. But okay, so you, you said a word though, that a lot of agents are scared of. You said call. So <laughs> hypothetically, you call them, they don't pick up. What is your process? Are you texting? Are you sending a video message? Are you just calling on repeat until they throw their phone out the window? What does that look like? Yeah. So immediately they don't call. I'm leaving a voicemail. I'm shooting them a text and then I'm shooting them a DM. Now, most likely they are all going to be different as well, because I don't want them to be like, oh, this dude is just copy and pasting and he sounds like a robot. Right. I know it takes a little bit more time, but you're telling me that you wouldn't take 10 to 30 more seconds out of your day to write different messages. Just be like, hey, just let you know, I'm not a random person. This is Nassim from Boise, Idaho. I saw you needed someone uh, to help you with a, a listing out here. Let me know when's a good time to connect or the Facebook DM. I'm going to go, hey, I'm going to give you a call real quick. I actually just left you a voicemail and a text. Let me know if you got those. If you didn't, here's my phone number. Feel free to give me a call back. So just taking those 10 to 30 seconds to make, you know, anywhere between six to who knows how much the price point is going to be. You're telling me you wouldn't take that time to do that real quick. That would be insane. So that's kind of what my follow up process looks like on a on a dead call. After that, say they they leave you on red, they see your DM. Mm-hmm. Are you calling again tomorrow? Are you calling later in the day? What is your follow up process from there? Yeah, we're definitely calling them back later in the day. You don't want to leave anything up for chance. Maybe they were showing houses. We all know real estate agents are busy, right? We're all sometimes even posts I've seen have gotten posted, but they have to get approved in certain groups, right? So they may post two days later. But guess what? They may have already found an agent as well because they posted on this other group that exact same post and it got approved right away because they don't have to wait. So it's just following up and just keep dialing the phone. It doesn't have to be necessarily right then that second, five minutes later. Maybe it's 30 minutes. Maybe it's an hour. Uh, But I at least want to call back one more time. And if if it's not there, then maybe a follow up text the next day. But that's that's the extent of it. I don't want to keep bugging them because here's the thing. As the reality is, you're also not the only agent doing it right. Now, there may be other agents calling. There may not be. There may be other agents that are commenting. There may not be. There's going to be a bunch of agents doing different things. This is just how I do it. And it's been highly, highly effective at converting. We're probably converting at about anywhere between a 70 to 80 percent rate just just based off of that alone. It, and it's it's crazy how many agents don't do it. You know, like you'll spend so many hours preparing for an open house or hours, like you mentioned before, door knocking. And then when you have people that are commenting saying, I am moving, I am a ready, willing, and able buyer, they stop after one click, you know, after one post. And I, yeah. I found that a lot of people will typically ask the same questions, you know, what are the safe neighborhoods, which of course we cannot answer, but what are the di- school districts that I should be looking at? So I, I always try to do what everyone else is not doing. So like I, I started a YouTube channel yeah. 
And now I'm just like commenting yep. just the YouTube channel. I'm like, you will, well, as soon as you click on it, you will come into, you know, you'll see all the other videos that I've posted. Right. This is, okay, so this is stuff that you've done for other agents. Does the same apply for clients that are saying, I'm moving, my, my spouse and I are moving. Is it the same tempo? <laughs> Yo, real quick, this podcast is not free. Cost of admission is sharing with a buddy who'd benefit or throwing it on your Instagram story. Tag us, we'll reshare that shit. Yeah, yeah. So obviously first I kind of check in with my personal group, right? And I'm like, hey, I know where everyone's at. So if I have someone in San Antonio or somewhere, you know, where we have an agent already, I don't really have to go out looking for that agent. But I also use that as an advantage to network, right? It just comes back to network and collaborating. Now you have built this solid, you know, relationship with this agent because you put money in their pockets. So I'm going to go on the groups and do the same thing, or maybe they're military, right? So I'm going to use the EXP military network, right? And it's just using all these different avenues for sending the referrals. And if, Hey, someone doesn't get back to me, well, there's always 500 more Facebook groups I could go hit real quick. Quick question on calling them ASAP. What is yeah. your, are you just like Googling them to find the phone number if they're oh, an agent or how are you getting the number? What? The best stalker ever. Yeah. No, I'm, <laughs> I'm looking through everything. I'm looking at Facebook, Google, whatever like information I can get. And you have to be like, you have to be quick because it's just like any other speed, like speed you drop city, right? Speed to lead. Everyone says mm -hmm. it all the time, but no one understands it. So as soon as I see it, I'm gone. Like I'm looking at Facebook. I'm looking at all their photos. I'm trying to see if they got an open house with their number on it. Right. And then if yeah. it's not their number, I'm calling their office. Hey, I'm trying to connect with so-and-so. What's their number? Dude, the thing is though, and people listening are like, oh, it's so simple. You have to care though. That's like the main thing. It's like, do you actually want it? Because yeah. if you don't actually want it, you're not going to put in all the effort to do all the, and then you're going to be like, oh, well, I suck at, you know, I suck at real estate. Real estate. Yeah. I just can't close. It's not for me. No, it takes work. It's hard. It's effort and it takes energy. So a question real quick, CRM. Are you putting all of these into a CRM or is like Facebook and Instagram your CRM? What was your process? <laughs> yeah, no. So we use a uh, go high level. That's the CRM we currently use. And we use actually Asian HQ. So that's a platform through Will Grimes and Eli Schmidt, who are actually my real estate coaches personally. Oh my God. Um, so are you in their downline? No, I'm actually not. I connected with them in Las Vegas. And, and that was just one of those opportunities of networking with people. And I went, met them. Will Grimes, absolute monster. Like he's taught me so much and, and, you know, I'm, I've only been in the game for two years. So when you're talking that's to someone sweet. that's, you know, doing seven figures a year, yeah, I'm going to listen to what you got to say. Dude, uh, we, we've had Will on the show. We've had Elliot on the show and yeah. we just got Will to speak at the real estate Rockstars mastermind that we did this. Like we're, we're bros. We love those dudes. Oh. So now I like you better now because of your, oh, can yeah. you see the relationship? It's so much deeper. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, sorry. Go high level. Got it. Yeah, cool. Okay. I use go high level too. So yeah, no. yeah. So yeah, go high level, as you know, and they already have it all set up and workflows are good to go. So I, I really, I'm, I'm dialing that in and just making sure that we're putting everything in because the biggest mistake is some people will win those referrals. They'll sign the agreement and they're so happy they got the referral that they forgot about it. So it's dude, what are you doing? Get them in the CRM, start touching, touching as much as you need to check in with them as they get closer to that timeline, whether it's a month or six months, at least you have them in your CRM and you can just keep doing your follow-ups until they're actively ready to buy or sell. You mentioned the, the workflow behind the scenes. What does that look like with, with go high level or what with yours specifically? Wow. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's a lot. So, <laughs> so we have a couple of text messages that get sent out immediately, right? We have our, hey, uh, it was great connecting with you. And then we have our two hour, um, hey, just want to send over this uh, reminder text um, to as far as what the next couple steps are. And then it's just going to keep going if they don't respond, right? So it's just going to do the touch ups. And that's kind of what it looks like without getting too deep into exactly what it's doing. I would have to look at it just to see what it's doing. It's all automated. It's all hands off. But Typically, once we get off the phone with the agent, our first step is making that call to the client. And I typically will actually have the agent themselves set a group chat between us all so they can introduce me as well. I don't like to just call someone out the blue and just be like, hey, I'm your guy. And so and so said that you're moving and I'm going to be working with you. Right. That's a little weird. Let's let's get an introduction so that you come from a reliable source because they trusted this agent to send this referral already. But but once they're in the CRM, it's based off of their timeline and how much we need to be touching up with them. If you were knowing what you know now, 
you know, yep. you've, you're already an icon agent. You are top 1% of EXP. What would you do if you were a brand new agent right now? Would you do anything differently? As far as lead gen? 1000%. So one thing I never knew about was, I mean, we all know about agent to agent referrals. We just don't know how to get into it, right? No one knows, oh, how do you get him? How do you do it? Where, what, where do I start? And it really started for me, networking wise, was posting myself. Hey, I'm the same. I'm in Boise, Idaho. I'm, I made, I'm not going to tell them I'm a new agent, right? Because a lot of people say, don't hop on the phone, tell me you're a new agent. That's the quickest way to get out, right? Now, if they ask how much experience you have, I always tell people, hey, when I started, hey, I have a little under a year's experience, but I have, you know, worked with many clients and made a lot of real estate dreams come true. But to come back to what you're asking, as a new agent, I would be posting myself on every platform available. I would just copy and paste, copy and paste, but I'm not going to hit the same groups with the exact same posts at the exact same time every single day, right? I'm going to go and post on this group. And then the next day I'm going to go post on this group. And then the next day I'm going to post on this group. And I always tell people within those posts a little bit about me so I can relate to them. Hey, prior Air Force veteran here. Hey, I love the 49ers. I got a pit bull. And I'm going to talk a little bit about myself. So hopefully something that I say resonates with some agent out there, right? And a lot of people love dogs. So if you don't, if you don't love dogs or if you don't have a dog, maybe you love your child. Or if you don't have a child, maybe you love your house. You know, whatever it is that you love that you want to talk about and share with the world, put it out there. And maybe somehow, some way you'll resonate with someone that'll want to connect with you. But I also, in a way, I also give them a call to action, right? And my call to action is, hey, if you want to connect, shoot me a friend request, right? So now I know they want to, they want to be with me. They want to get in contact with me. They want to connect with me and grow with me and potentially become referral partners down the line. So that's what I would do as a brand new agent. I would be putting myself everywhere and seeing, you know, who would pick up on potentially wanting to work with me in the future. Do you have a process now? Are you still doing the same play of the five people adding a day or do you have more people coming in now and has your process changed in regard to what you do with people? Yeah. So as far as adding the five people a day, I don't do that as much. It's, it's on a case by case scenario, depending on you know what we got going on that week. But I am consistent with the posts. I am consistent with the stories. And the reason why I don't add five people a day anymore is because we're starting to get too close to that 5,000 friends limit on Facebook. So we have to kind of tread carefully with that because I don't want to get too many people on there to where I can't add anymore. So what I'll do is I'll still connect with people, right? I'll have them shoot me a friend request and not everyone you have to add, right? Sometimes people will just follow you. And if they follow you, you don't have to add them back and you can just go check out their profiles every now and then. Now, I'm not saying I have a system for that, right? Because that's almost impossible to track who's following you and who's not. But every now and then I'll just kind of scroll around and see who's following me and just click on their page and just like, comment, message. I want to pivot a little bit and ask about so, okay, so you have, you're working with buyers, you're working with sellers, you're working agent to agent referrals, inbound, outbound, being that we're all with EXP, there's revenue share. I want to talk a little bit about like the GOAT group, rev share. What is, what does that look like? Are yeah. you, yeah, what does that look like? Yeah, so the GOAT group, that was more so something that I kind of just came up with because I wanted a brand, right? I didn't know what way, shape or form. I was going to take it. But the most important thing to me was to have a brand. And that meant creating this. And it just kind of came afloat, no intention, anything at all, as far as agent attraction or anything like that. I just wanted to network with more people. And then I also wanted to create a circle of people that I know and trust um, to become legitimate, you know, established referral partners with. Um, so we have a group chat and everything. And it's not just my downline. It's not just people at EXP. It's actually people from different brokerages, whether it's, you know, local mom and pop brick mortar companies, or if they're at Keller Williams or real or whatever other company, they made a poor decision to go join. No offense to anybody with a different brokerage. I'm just talking shit, but <laughs> you know, we, I'm, I'm very open to that. I know that your brokerage doesn't necessarily have a correct reflection as far as you as an agent. And I just wanted people in my circle. So eventually it actually transitioned from this this group to now our EXP community, which we're starting to grow and we're just trying to give more love to.
you keep saying we, and I'm just curious about the, is when you say we, do you mean your EXP community that you're starting to grow and build now? Or is like we, like you and a transaction coordinator, or is we, you and the go, I don't know. And just curious about what is, yeah. who is we? Yeah. So we, when I say we, I'm talking about the, the GOAT group in general, right? So I try not to keep, I try not to make it about myself. I try to make it about my team as a whole, because we're all in it together, truthfully. And, and just the level of support I do get from them, regardless if I'm the leader or not, you know, they keep me on my toes, just, you know, vice versa. So I, when I talk, we, I'm talking big picture as far as the go group. I have followed you, I think since EXP con, I think that's where we got in touch. What, and, and I know that you have, you're, you're very driven, very ambitious, high goals. What are your goals yeah. for 2024? And what are your goals? What's like your 10 year plan? You know, what's your short term plan and your long term plan? Apple listeners, this short pause is to ask you for a review. Here's how to do it back out of the specific episode. Go to the page where you see all the episodes. Scroll down, keep scrolling. Perfect. Now tap those five stars. Thank you so much. Back to the show. Yeah, so my my long term, well, I guess we'll start with the year, right? That makes most sense. But so my one year plan, right, for, for the year is to close 90 transactions, which I'm, and before I get into it, this last year, I closed 30, right? So for me to set a goal of 90 transactions, that's tripling down on everything I've done this last year, um, which, which to me, that's okay, because I would much rather shoot way higher than I think is possible than, you know, coming in and being like, oh, I'm gonna just do 60, which that's not bad, right? That's actually amazing. Most people don't even get anywhere close to that, you know, within the first couple of years. But to me, it's just like, I would much rather shoot so much higher and just fail that than shoot, sell myself short and go very low. So 90 transactions. My biggest thing is I want to make seven figures. I want to hit 1 million in GCI this year. And then I also want to attract 25 agents to, to my downline first, you know, first layer, first level. And then goodness, another goal was purchase a second property, which we're actually in now. So that was a huge milestone for me. And then Goodness, what was my last one? My last one. Oh, number one EXP agent in Idaho. So that is my final. Just as an individual agent, I'm always watching the leader production. That shit gets my fire in the stomach when I see I'm not number one, which we're currently sitting at number two. And I've been neck and neck with this girl. So huge props to her for being able to compete with me because I'm fucking hungry and I'm just ready to like just drop her off the board. But but yeah, those are my 2024 goals. And as far as long-term goals, I really, I don't have a 10-year plan. Um, it's really more so of a five-year plan. And the one goal and one goal only that I'm focused on in the next five years is to be able to retire at the age of 30 willingly. If I can't do that in the next five years, then I'm letting myself go. And I haven't been pushing hard enough because by the time I hit 30 and yes, I'm only 25. I know Dude, I, I was about to older. stop everything. I was like, what? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I'm only 25. Yeah. Believe it or not, what? I'm so mature. I know. That's it. The maturity. No. Yeah, yeah. Dude, that's so sick like, though. Dude, fuck yeah. Congrats on your 30 you, last you. year and like all of your hustle and all your energy. Like you were pumping me up. You really are. Yeah. So anyway, That's what yeah. I like to do. That's what Five I like years. to do. Fuck yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What's your hit us? What's that? Bes retire willingly at 30. Is there anything else? Or I mean, the one goal, I mean, that's good. That's, that's good enough. That's fucking awesome. Yeah. That's so, and, and I just, and, and some people are like, oh, that's it. And it's, yeah, that's it. I literally just want to work my ass off these next five years and I'll set my goals yearly. Right. I know some people are like, you need a one year goal, a three year goal, a five year goal and a 10 year goal. I'm like, bro, fuck all that. I just want one goal in the long term, And that's to be able to not want to work or not have to work anymore. Unless I'm willingly wanting to wake up at 5 AM and, and go to the fuck to work. That's it. With with the retirement, what do you have a, a rough vision of? Do you think that that will be like through revenue share or through rental properties, or are you going to build out a team, or maybe you just make so much money that you're like, "Fuck it, I'm good." What is yeah. that? Do you know? No, that's a great question. So, man, I'm a huge believer in passive income, right? And right now, for this year, my goal is very, very heavy as far as production, right? So. As I get to the next year, right, we're already kind of incorporating agent revenue share, which if you're not taking advantage of that, as I'm sure you guys, I know you guys are for a fact, right? It's just such a huge and 
easy way to help people and also help yourself get out of the real estate game um, early, right? So for me, it's definitely going to start transitioning into that way. But I also have other things, right? I want to start building out my my real estate investment portfolio. I also want to add in, you know, some Turo. So like renting out cars, like I have so many different things I want to do, you know, entrepreneur wise, right? We always want to do 15,000 different things, right? And I'm okay with that. I would much rather put myself under if that means in, in a couple of years, I'll be in a position where I can retire. And, and that's kind of what it looks like. So to be specific, I don't have necessarily one way of wanting to retire. It's more so, hey, I just know I want to be making seven figures passively. And whether it's going to be through real estate portfolio or agent revenue share and just all these different avenues combined, that's that's kind of what I'm working towards. But this year, strictly, we're just focused on getting our production where we want it to be so we can start investing in the other things that will get us to where we want to be by 30. And you will be there by 30. That is, yeah, you're on a you're on a roll, dude. It's Thank it's you. been Thank awesome you. watching you from over the socials. It's it's really been cool. It, before we head to our wrap up questions, is there anything that we missed that you'd like to share? Man, I feel like you guys asked some pretty good damn questions. So I feel like I hit a lot more than I was even expecting to be, you know, pouring out today. So no, I, I think you guys hit everything uh, on the head. Hell yeah. Dude. Okay, sweet. Yeah. <laughs> wrap up question number one. What is your favorite app or tool? Man, just chat GBT. And, and I say that because I fucking hate sitting there and thinking about what I want to say, whether I'm in like a good head space or a bad head space, right? Or just being professional sometimes because I love to just sling the F word and say shit and just say bad things that I probably shouldn't say in a professional setting. But that, that's just really my number one tool. It just helps me kind of get a second opinion and just using that, right? Like it's, you could use it as your virtual assistant. You could use that as your, your psychologist in a way. You could just use it in a different couple other ways. And that's just my big tool for me personally. Dude, you're the second person I've heard give that answer where it's ChatGPT is like basically my therapist. You didn't say those words. You said psychologist, yeah. but it's like the same vibe where it just, it's just so funny. But love that. Love that answer. Question number two, what events are you going to in the next 12 months? Yeah, so I actually got invited to go speak in Japan to to one of the Air Force bases out there. So I may be doing that in the November, December time frame. We're still allocating time for that, but I'll definitely be at EXP Con. We just set, we just came back from the Cabo trip, which was awesome, Cabo 2024. So really really opened my eyes to the agent revenue share, but yeah, next 12 months the only thing I'm planning on right now is EXP Con and going to speak in Japan. Okay, I have to ask a, a further question on the Cabo. I've never been what what yeah. did you what were your takeaways from that that anybody can do it truthfully that was it like <laughs> i say that's it but genuinely there's a lot more to it i would have yeah. to relook at my notes but man it's it's just finding the right people you want to align yourself with you'll start to kind of build that community as you guys are already doing so well with the five pillars right you just continue to find like-minded individuals and as you guys grow more people will want to be a part of your community but what I really took away from it was take people where you go, right? Take your community with you, really make it a community and you can build something special and that will eventually pay off in the, in the financial uh, headspace. Nice. Nice. Oh, Shelby. <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't know you were going to like comment and I was going to jump into uh, the next one. So I like breathed and then I just held my breath. Um, all right. Keep holding your breath. How can we <gasps> help you with your business now? <laughs> How can we help you with your business? Help me with my business. Goodness, man, just making sure everyone gives me a follow at Idaho Realtor Nas on Facebook and as me on Instagram. That's it. We just love to network. That's why I'm here and I want to continue to network with people. So that's how you can help my business is reaching out and, and networking with me. And one more time, just when people do want to reach out, you mentioned Instagram, but go ahead and just lay it all again. Where's the best place for people to connect with you? Yeah. So my first name is Nassim, N-A-S-E-E-M. I know it sounds difficult. It's, it's very easy. Last name Issa, E-I-S-S-A. -S I promise I'm probably the only Middle Eastern dude with a suit on in his profile picture with that name. So you guys will find me easily on Facebook. And then on Instagram and TikTok, Idaho Realtor Nas. Hell yeah. And we are Allie the Agent. 
and the Shelby show on the gram as well. Hit us up with feedback. If there's anybody that you want on the show, let us know. We respond to all DMs. So, and if you haven't given this podcast a five-star rating, do so now. Be a bro and share this show. Thanks so much for listening, dude. If you want the golden nugget that this guest provided, see the show notes or just go straight to theagentgoldmine.com. That's where we keep all our resources for you. Till next time.